Are you homeschooling one child? Well, today I have great news for you. I am pleased to be hosting a collab with some of my favorite YouTube mamas who homeschool one child right now. So please make sure that you check out the playlist because we will have videos from mamas of early elementary ages all the way up through high school on how we are homeschooling one child. Now homeschooling one child can be you have one child, you have one child who's currently in school and you have younger children, you have multiple children but only one of them are being homeschooled. So for you mama who is homeschooling one child, let's chat about it. Homeschooling an only is different than homeschooling multiple children, it just is. Now many times when I make videos, I like to ask my husband or my daughter what their opinions are. I mean, my husband is what I call the principal of our homeschool my daughter obviously is the student for homeschool and so I wanted to take what all of us feel and really put it concisely into this video. Well, when I asked my husband, what do you think I should say about homeschooling one child? He said, well, all your videos are about homeschooling one child. And they really are because I share our perspective on how things go with us with, as having one child. Does a curriculum work for us? We have one child. So as much as that was not an answer that I wanted, it really is a true answer. So all of my videos are about homeschooling one child. It's a, about our homeschooling journey and we have one child that we're homeschooling. When I asked my daughter what she thought I should say about homeschooling one child, she said, say it's awesome. Okay, according to her, it's awesome. Well, there's their feedback. But now let's talk about the notes that I have for homeschooling one child and my experience with it. Now these are the types of videos that I am a little bit less comfortable with. So I just grabbed my handy dandy water bottle and we're going to do some chatting and I hope that this is helpful to you. If it is, please make sure that you let me know down below because I really want to put content out that is helpful to you. I would say one of my biggest struggles with homeschooling an only child is to get her to try harder, to get her to do her best, what I know is her best, what I know she is capable of. And I think some of that is because my daughter is a very competitive person, but she has no one to compete with. She doesn't have those peers in the classroom for her to say, oh, hey, they can do multiplication tables. I better learn my multiplication tables. Or hey, that writing a sound sounded great when they read it. I need to work a little bit harder because I'm going to be reading mine in front of people too. That really is one of my biggest struggles is to get her to try harder so that she can reach her full potential. Now, sometimes I can just push her a little bit harder and say, yeah, we're not stopping until I know that your best work is here. Or I can say, hey, is this something that you really want me to show your dad? Or something like that. I, I don't really like doing that, but sometimes it is necessary for me to just push her that little extra bit to get her to where I know that she can be. Now in the past, I've also made things a competition to motivate her. When we were going into fourth grade, in third grade, she knew that her multiplication tables, for some reason, in fourth grade, she forgot them. And we were struggling so much with these multiplication tables. And I finally got to the point where I just said, we're moving forward, but I didn't only say we're moving forward. What I did say is that her friend's younger brother, who's two grades behind my daughter, I said, he's getting ready to start his multiplication tables. And so he's going to know them and you've forgotten them. Well, in less than a week, she knew and showed me that she knew those multiplication tables. Um, it was something where she just needed that little extra push. She needed me to make it a competition because that is something that she works well with. And even now we're what, almost three years later and she is saying, remember when you said that my friend's little brother knew his multiplication tables? She goes, that was probably a good idea to get me to know them. So something that I know that she would have been able to master like multiplication tables if she was in a setting where she had that competition. I just made it competition for her and it worked. Now, I don't do that often. I actually rarely do that, 
but for that situation, it was something that I needed to do. So sometimes you just may need to find the motivation to push to achieve the potential that you know that they have. So one of the benefits that I really like about homeschooling and only is that you can totally follow your child's interest. And so if my daughter is interested in civics, then we can spend a lot of time on civics. If my daughter is interested in quilting, we can spend a lot of time in quilting and we can really take a lot of time and focus on what her interests are. But with that, what if she doesn't know what her interests are? There's no other children around to be able to say, hey, I read the coolest thing about Mars why don't you let's let's look up Mars together or something like that. So what I have had to do with this is basically we set aside about five minutes. We used to do it every day. I really would like to get back to every day where she looks through DK books and tell and she has to tell me interesting facts. And then we can determine whether we want to really study those facts or whether, hey, that's just a cool thing and kind of move on. But l learning what new things are out there and what new avenues there are to explore is something that we have to be very cognizant of and we have to be very intentional about putting those new areas in front of her and so that she will be able to then grasp onto what is within her interests and what really isn't and then be able to pursue those interests. If you enjoy videos like this, then please make sure that you are subscribed because as I mentioned, my whole channel is all about homeschooling and only. I did try a morning basket for a couple of months. It didn't work. One of the things that I consider about morning basket is really for the whole family to come together and study the same things and be a family unit and really be working together. Well, we're working together all the time all the time. So the morning basket just didn't work for us. Now what does work for us are documentaries and read alouds. We do those in the morning. That is our morning basket, documentaries and read alouds. And that is our really our morning time for us to get our day started, to really enjoy just waking up together, breakfast, etc. And that has worked well for a couple of years. So we will continue doing that. But I just wanna encourage you that if you look at things and say, hey, that's not working us. You don't have to do them. Just find what works for you and make your homeschool your own. One of the areas that I really did struggle and I really questioned myself was with regards to my daughter working with others. Is it good for her to be working by herself or working with me and not having that experience of working with others? And I discovered that she still gets that. She's on sports teams. She has to work with others for that. She still gets that. She still has friends and she learns how to work with them to do fun things when they're together. And so she still is getting that group work of working with others. One thing that I'm really focusing on is debate because I want her to back up her own ideas. And when she and I are discussing history or discussing science or discussing literature, it is so easy for her just to be like, mom, what's the answer? Versus being, I think this and this is why. And when we have those conversations, I have to be so willing to let that uncomfortable silence carry on. If I ask a question that she is thinking about, I have to be willing to let that silence go longer than what I'm truly comfortable with for her to be willing to voice her opinion because she thinks I have the answer. She thinks I have the right answer. And so why does she need to really think about it because somebody's going to tell it to her? Well, I have really been growing and working on not being the one to tell it to her, on being, what do you think of this? Why do you think that way? And let her back up her ideas. Now, sometimes her backing up her ideas are me saying, hey, you need to go find some facts about that. Why don't you research it? And then come back and we just can discuss it more. And sometimes it is just me being able to say, there's no right or wrong answer to this. I need to know your opinion and I need to know why you believe that. And But being willing to have that drawn out, 
uncomfortable silence is something that I truly had to learn to implement in our homeschool so that she would be willing to formulate her opinions and express them. Now that really moves into her being reliant on me and not necessarily on herself. Again, she wanted, you know, the right answers. What's the answer? Also, she wants me right there. And I think that that's one of the biggest tips that I can give you and it, that is to set boundaries. There are times where you just have to walk away for the simple fact that you need to walk away, not necessarily for your mental health, although sometimes for your mental health, not necessarily for your relationship, although sometimes for your relationship, but sometimes you need to walk away just to give your child that opportunity to be by themselves in a room working on their schoolwork, working on whatever task they have to just be by themselves doing it. And you can do that by saying, I need to put a load in the laundry. I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go put dinner in the crock pot. Just a time where your child is doing work on their own thinking through that math problem on their own. Now, I did notice that when I was doing this, sometimes she would just stop. She would just stop if she got to something that she didn't know how to do. And so we had to work on, you need to either skip over that problem and then we can discuss it when you get back. And then once we got better at skipping over the problem, we went to try it, try the problem. If you don't know it and if you don't get the right answer, that's okay, but at least you tried it. Because think about it, if you went to public school, which I went to public school, you had somebody you could ask, hey, what did you get on problem 17? Hey, how did you do this? How do you spell something? And she doesn't really have that opportunity to say, hey, how do you do this? To appear, it's always just with me. My daughter is going into seventh grade. Wow. And I've noticed that throughout the years, what she needs has changed. And that is one of the beauties of homeschooling one child is being able to focus on what they need at that specific stage. When my child was younger, what she needed is to go to the playground. And it, when she would go to the playground and we would meet whoever was there that day. And hey, this is my best friend. This is my best friend. And really what she needed was just to get out and go to the playground. And that made life very easy we would go to the playground it was wonderful as she got older her needs changed she needed a homeschool group rather than just meeting best friends at the playground she needed that group and so we became part of a homeschool group but with having that one child i was able to focus exclusively on what does she need for this time in her life and let's focus on it and let's make that happen and that worked out really well something that i really do consider to be a benefit of homeschooling one child are your resources your resources of time money energy you can focus these resources on that one child and really tailor the homeschool experience to that one child. That may mean that we can go on quite a few field trips just because our budget does not have to be as large for one museum so that we can go to a number of different ones. Also, it means that the museums that we choose are specifically designated to fulfill an interest that she has or introduce her to something that she doesn't know. So we can truly tailor the field trips and the experiences that we have based on what she needs or what she wants. Now in resources, I said money, time, and energy. With money, time, and energy, I also want to say set boundaries. Mama, you need boundaries because as a homeschool mom of and only that means you are the friend the mom the playmate the teacher all of it and so setting boundaries really will help your mental space your emotional space it will also help your relationship because you really need those boundaries to recharge and to be the best homeschool mom that you can be Please make sure you do check out the playlist because I'm so excited to find the tips that homeschool mamas of onlys are able to give you. Also, give yourself grace and find a tribe. 
find someone who is homeschooling and only. Homeschooling and only is different than homeschooling multiple children. It just is. Just like raising one child is different than raising multiple children. It's just different. And there is sometimes this perception that homeschooling and only is easier. I don't know whether it's easier or not because I have only homeschooled and only, but I do know that it has its own set of challenges. And finding someone who you can vent to, who you can celebrate with, who you can know understands what you're going through is so important. If you are looking for that community, please feel free to DM me and we can chat because it is so vital to have someone who understands what you are experiencing on a daily basis. And again, homeschooling one is different than homeschooling multiple children. It just is. Also, we have a great one child community app made to homeschool. There are mamas of only children there, but there are also grandmas who are homeschooling one of their grandchildren. There are mamas who have one child that they are homeschooling and then also have other children that are in school. If you are interested in joining Made to Homeschool or finding out more information about it, please check out the link down below.